fight Terrence Crawford knocks Kavalaskis out nine rounds after a thriller. I think it was better than people expected, but I warned people about this fight, and people called me crazy. They quick to call fighters bums, but the tape don't lie. But let's talk about it. We bad, good fella, Sports TV. Hey, shit, that subscribe button, bell icon button won't miss the video, right? Early on, uh, Kavalaskis had great timing, all right? Um, Bud was determined and hard hit it when you talk about that uh, towards the end of the video to fight out the southpaw position. Now, the southpaw position fighting out of there versus the dude with a with an elite right hand, well, a good right hand, and he seemed to have elite type of timing. Um, end up hurting Crawford in the long run instead of Crawford coming out from the southpaw position in boxing or coming to our orthodox in boxing, he came in there to test Kavalaskis and um. Kavalaskis' timing was on point. He hit Bud with a shot that I told you guys that he had. It was a good overhand right hand and a good right hand in general. And that's the southpaw's uh, weakness. In the I think it was the second, third round, Kavalaskis actually dropped Bud. That was, and, and people come in here saying, you know, you probably about to be, hey, I keep it 100. I don't nobody pay me. He dropped him, and, and the ref didn't call it. Bud got up, and he was more hard-headed than before. He, he stayed southpaw to prove a point to Kavalaskis. Kavalaskis was landing some good shots. I think I gave Kavalaskis the second, third, and fourth round. Uh, and I think the second and third was a knockdown. So I had him up, and then Crawford just stepped it up. You know, he started tapping him to the body. He's a good body puncher. He left a lot of body punch, punches out there. Early on, he hit him with a good right hand to the body, I think it was, at one point in the fight. And it hurt him. He backed up, but then he proceeded to go to the head. But, um... You know, obviously, Kavalaskis has only been 10 rounds twice, as Andre Ward said. And Crawford stepped it up, and he kept coming. You know what I'm saying? And versus a bigger opponent, that could be a problem where, um, you know, he took Kavalaskis' best shots early on at full strength. And eventually, he proved to have a more durable chin, had had a better, be a stronger guy, and had a more stamina. And Kavalaskis' punch output continued to drop. Buzz continued to rise, but Kavalaskis was landing some good punch combinations that really was opened up by that right hand. And, um, you know, Bud eventually figured him out um, from the southpaw position when he got him hurt. Then he would switch orthodox. Uh, he dropped him one time, and then in the ninth, he dropped him twice uh, with one of my favorite combinations. It was a – he fainted, came back with a with a left hook, right hand combination, I think it was. And then he ended up dropping him with an uppercut. And then he came back with a big right hook from the orthodox position. And he ended up ending Kavalaskis. And Kavalaskis is, is is better than people gave him credit for. People said, ooh, he, he lost to Ray Robinson. I didn't think he lost to Ray Robinson. And that was my humble opinion. I didn't think Ray Robinson did enough. But uh, Kavalaskis is a tough guy. And I said that. And I said that coming in. I said he got a punch that, can, that worries me about the Terrence Crawford fight. And that was the roundhouse right hand and the right hand, but dude sit there and laughed at me in the live chat. And and people just don't understand, like, I don't be playing about this, this shit. When we talking about real X's and O's, we a troll, we a joke about trill tranny talk, and we a joke about that, but I wasn't playing about this kid having a punch that could be the ticket to uh, beating Terrence Crawford, but Crawford banged him out of his frame, as I expected. But the one thing that I'm going to tell you guys to take away from this fight is that part of this was on top, top rank fought. And part of this was on PPC for it, but not a lot of it. But, you know, when you got to go out there and you got to impress because the promotional company and network you're working on pushing Lomachenko harder, they saying this guy better well to it than you. They saying this guy pound for pound for you. And then at the same time, they not putting significant money up to make these fights happen or well, more than significant money to make these fights happen. You got to go out there and you got to try to overly impress. This is like you, you know, bagging a girl out your league. And now you got to act like you somebody you're not when if you just be yourself, eventually it may, it may take you, you know, it may take you five or six, seven times, ten times to get to your goal rather than, hey, man, I'm going to get to my goal in two or three times. And with Crawford, instead of just systematically breaking them down, boxing, using lateral movement, orthodox, and then southpaw when you when get a feel for him, you know, he did something that Errol Spence didn't do. And people going to sit there and say, oh, based off this, Earl Spence will beat him. We should talk about it live tomorrow. God willing, right? Um, oh, you know, Earl Spence beat him based off this. Look here. One thing about this, Ingus is is a solid, is an orthodox fighter, right? And another thing about this, Ingus actually actually punches um, punches with with you. Cro Errol Spence don't. Every now and again, if you on Errol Spence's ass, every now and again, he'll punch with you. Had he punched with Sean Porter, 
he probably end up knocking Sean Porter out. But he punched with him once, he dropped him. Errol Spence don't have a counterpunching ability that Kai Velasquez does. But what people don't understand in boxing is, oh, you might rate him a bum, but this bum is an Olympian, but he does some things that top fighters can't do so well. Same thing with Arthur Spilka and Deontay Wilder. You know, Arthur Spilka was outboxing Deontay Wilder for a full minute. And eventually, you know, Wilder landed the money shot that pretty much put him in a stretcher. But Otto Waleem was outboxing, was beating up Tyson Fury, let a lot of you guys tell it. And guess what? You know, it, people can people can make a case that Otto Waleem won that fight and Wilder lost to Fury in the first fight. Otto Waleem does some things better than Deontay Wilder. You know what I'm saying? But another thing about it is, Bud just showed you guys that he ain't scared to give you a firefight. He ain't scared to go out there and put put his balls on the line. Whereas you pay 75, 80 bucks to watch Earl Spence, you know, massage Mikey Garcia lightweight. Terrence Crawford just took out a foolish fledged welterweight. You know what I'm saying? You looking at um um Earl Spence going out there massaging Mikey Garcia, giving him a, a Swedish massage and not going balls to the wall like Terrence Crawford. Crawford wasn't leaving that ring unless he knocked out Kyle Velasquez or Kyle Velasquez knocked him. He's a go-getter. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, will he fight Earl Spence that way? If he does, he get Earl Spence a better chance of knocking him out and beating him. But he could have sat there and outboxed uh, Kyle Velasquez for 10, 11, 12 rounds and massaged him like Earl Spence beat, uh, did Mikey. But he went out there and he closed the show. And what is this? Jeff Horn, Jose Benavidez, Amir Khan, and not Kyle Velasquez. He got four knockouts in four fights at the welterweight division. All right? You know, but like I said before, people going to say, oh, Errol Spence can beat him. Let's see if some of these dudes get brave enough. Let's see if Sean want to get in there, which I don't think Sean's scared of nobody. Danny Garcia, we know he a hoe. Let's see if he want to get in there after this. You know what I'm saying? Let's see if it ties some people to jump from across the street and fight Crawford. Because people forget uh, uh, Floyd Mayweather touched the canvas versus Ab Judah. You know what I'm saying? Shit happens. And I'm giving Kyle Velasquez credit for that knockdown. But at the end of the day, you not, he's not going to approach Errol Spence the same way he brought, approached Kyle Velasquez. And that's the God honest truth. But what that tells me is he got right back up and still fought the same fight, and that's not good, and it's it's, expi it's inspiring. You know, it tells you that he got a lot of heart. It tells you that he a game dog, but one thing it tells you is he's stuck in his ways. He want to prove a point, no matter if he going to put him on his back and he going to be broke on his, on his knuckles. That ain't a good attribute to have. You know what I'm saying? You you need to do what, when you on this level, you need to pick your spots when to be wily and when not to be wily. You know, but Kavalasis was a game dog. And Crawford could have came out there and did a Mayweather pity pat, pity pat roll, step over, and box the easy 12 round decision. But he got pressure to impress. It ain't it ain't just that, oh, I gotta, you know, impress, you know, uh the fans. No, he gotta impress top ranking ESPN to give him credit. But they're gonna act like this DEFCON 55,000. You know, even though Lomachenko got knocked down, he got beat up by Pedraza for 12 rounds and stuff of that. Well, some of the 12 rounds and stuff of that nature. You know what I'm saying? People going to act like Earl Spence to get rocked by the African dude early in his career. But at the end of the day, well, it, it shouldn't be no hiding. You know, for a fact, I know one of the major sanction belt bodies, you know, I'm not going to say their name, told, you know, told me some things, told some people some things, you know, about that, who holding that fight up. You know, at the end of the day, if y'all think it's easy peasy, lemon squeeze, let's get a petition signed up to get Danny Garcia or Sean Porter or Earl Spence, you know, in the ring with this kid, man. Let's see it. But like I said before, uh, Kyle Velasquez do some things Earl Spence can't do. Same thing. Otto Wiley do some things that Deontay Wilder couldn't do versus Tyson Fury. You know what I'm saying? Crawford gave y'all an exciting knockout. Not You didn't have to pay $80 to see him massage a lightweight in Mikey Garcia, or you want to call him a junior welterweight. He went out there, and he got the knockout. And congratulations to Tiafima Lopez and Mick Collin, born trash ass. But it was a solid, it was a good card, action-packed. Um, two out of three was knockout. So shout out to Kyle Velasquez, man. You know, he deserves some credit out there as well, too, because he had a great game plan. He had nothing to lose in this fight, and that is what it is. So um, we're going to see what Trill Tranny talk talking about in uh, uh, Fanatic Fanon, the maniac. I hope he sniffs some of that white stuff he be smoking when he be talking now. So uh, they, they fake general, then really turned them out to be black activists, but they all really dating the other, but hey, that is what it is, good fellow sports TV, don't forget me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, reach out to the email, if you got business questions, cry response, your video request, want to make a donation, just share the video, don't forget me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, reach out to the email, all the links in the description, one time for the one time, good fellow sports TV, we on.